All right, everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll continue our conversation on colligative properties with a focus on freezing point depression and boiling point elevation. So freezing point depression is an effect from vapor pressure lowering that we discussed in the previous video. And so remember that when we have a non-volatile solute added to our solvent to create a solution, it lowers the vapor pressure of that solution. And therefore, the result is a lower freezing point, and that's why it's called a freezing point depression, and a higher boiling point, and that is called boiling point elevation. And so let's go ahead and highlight the curve here. Originally, our phase diagram of the solvent itself alone looked like this, but when we lower the vapor pressure, we see the whole curve um, lowers, and I will highlight that. This is the now new phase diagram of the solution. And as a result, we have a lowering of the melting point, um, and therefore that's the freezing point. Let me draw this in. That's the freezing point depression, and we have a higher boiling point of the solution, that's boiling point elevation. And so you can see here, if we're looking at normal freezing point and normal boiling point, we'd be looking at one atmosphere. And you can see that between the difference of the pure solvent to that of the solution. All right, so the trend we can state here is that the freezing point is lowered with a non-volatile solute. Remember we, we discussed what volatility means. It means something that evaporates easily. And so we're saying that we're adding a non-volatile solute. It's going to stick around. It's going to mix with our solvent to make a solution. All right, so an example of the a real world application of freezing point um, depression is the use of antifreeze. And so antifreeze is used to prevent the freezing of engine blocks in cold climates. In addition, um, they put salt on the roads if there's snow or ice. Um, to help lower the freezing point and, and melt that ice. All right, so the formula for you to learn here is the freezing point depression is calculated from the molality times the freezing point depression constant for the solvent times the number of particles. So let me write that down. So delta TF and actually, I'm going to now abbreviate it as FP, so for freezing point, the change in the freezing point, this is called freezing point depression. The little m italicized stands for molality. KF is the freezing point depression constant and something I want to emphasize here is that it's the freezing point depression constant for the solvent. So once again when you're approaching these word problems it's important to identify your solute and your solvent. Um, in this case when you look up the KF you're looking up the KF for the solvent. And then I stands for the Van Hoft factor, which just tells you the number of particles. And I'll have a separate lecture discussing um, this I, but just as a brief example here, let's say we have glucose and we dissolve it in water. Glucose is a covalent organic molecule. It's not gonna break up in water. 
and so therefore it stays whole and so when we dissolve it in water then the I is one remember with colligative properties it does not matter what the type of particles are being dissolved in your solvent it matters the number of particles so for example, if we were dissolving sodium chloride in water, we've learned since first semester general chemistry that that breaks up into sodium cations and chloride anions. So for every formula unit for sodium chloride, we get two particles, the sodium cation and the chloride anion, and so therefore I is equal to two. And it's slightly less than two, but we're just gonna treat it um, as if it was full dissolution. Okay. All right, boiling point. It's going to be very similar calculation, but remember that it's higher with a non-volatile sol solute. For example, antifreeze plays a critical role as well in hotter climates, so it also prevents the boiling. of the water within engine blocks. In hot climates. And the way we calculate it is, like I said, very similar to freezing point. Depression, boiling point elevation is the molality times the boiling point elevation constant for the solvent times the number of particles dissolved in water. All right, let's work an example problem together. Okay, we have an ethylene glycol solution contains 21.2 grams of ethylene glycol and 85.4 milliliters of water. Based on this information, which one is your solute? Excellent, it's ethylene glycol. It's the one that's in lesser amount and therefore your solvent is water. So when you're doing any word problems involving solutions, make sure you identify your solute and your solvent. And this question's asking us to determine the freezing point and boiling point of the solution, assuming the density of water is one time, one gram per milliliter. So let's write down what we're given and what we need to solve for. So we're giving mass is equal to 21.2 grams of ethylene glycol, which is C2H6O2, and we've identified that as a solute. And we have the volume of water, which is our solvent, is equal to 85.4 milliliters, and that the density of water is equal to one gram per milliliter. So this problem was explicit in saying that that's the density of the water, not the density of the, the solution itself. So just be mindful of that. And we need to find the freezing point of the solution and also the boiling point of the solution. And in order to do so, we will use the formulas delta T, the freezing point depression is equal to the molality times Kf times I, and also the boiling point elevation formula, which is molality times Kb times I. So first thing we notice is that we need I, and I is based on the solute that's being dissolved, so in this case ethylene glycol. So what would I be equal to for ethylene glycol? Good. I is 1 because ethylene glycol is, an, is a covalent organic molecule. It's not ionic. It's not going to break up into more particles. Um, so I is 1. Fantastic. It also looks like we need to solve for molality. And molality is what over what? Excellent. Moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. 
And so you can see I'm organizing the data from the word problem and writing down what we already know, right? And that helps us to give us a clue as to how to move forward, right? And so if I know I need to, I know I have I, that's good. KF and KB are literature, we can look that up. And then molality is something I'll need to solve for. So I need to figure out what moles of solute are. I can figure that out from the grams. I need to figure out kilograms of solvent, and I can figure that out using volume and density. So let's go ahead and get started. So the moles of the solute, we're going to start with 21.2 grams of ethylene glycol. And based on its molecular formula, it has a molar mass of 62.07 grams per mole. Grams cancels out. And so the number of moles is 0.341-5498 moles of C2H6O2. All right. I also need to figure out kilograms of the solvent, which is water. And so I start off with 85.4 milliliters of water. And anytime you want to go from volume to mass, you use the density. And the density here is assumed to be one gram per milliliter. Density changes with temperature, but more often than not, we'll just assume that the density of water is one. Um, and the milliliters of water cancel out, but remember molality ask for kilograms of solvent. And so how many grams are in a kilogram? Excellent. There are 1,000 grams in one kilogram. Very good. So that's canceled out. And then you end up with 0 0.0854 kilograms of water. And with both those pieces of information we just calculated together, we can figure out the molality. So molality is equal to 0.3415498 moles of ethylene glycol over 0 0.0854 kilograms of water. And I got the molality to be 3.999412. I like to write molal as the units rather than just little m. Sometimes little m to me looks like mass, and so I just want to be clear that this is molality, and we'll highlight that. Also, in terms of significant figures, it looks like we're limited to three sig figs, and so if we had to round, it would have been to that decimal place there. All right, so I'm going to start with the freezing point depression formula. And that's equal to molality, so 3.999412 molal times the Kf, and Kf for water is 1.86 degrees Celsius over the molal times 1, because I is equal to 1. Okay, so remember that this is for water, and you would have to look that up. So it's always for your solvent, in this case water. Your solvent may not always be water, so be careful with that. So I got the answer here to be 7.4389 degrees Celsius. So remember that this is not the actual freezing point, this is just the change, and that the freezing point is lowered in comparison to the actual freezing point of the solvent. So therefore, the freezing point of the solution is equal to the freezing point of the solvent minus, because remember we're lowering the freezing point, so minus the freezing point depression, that change. 
and that this value here is always absolute value, but we understand that it lowers the freezing point. And so that's the reason why we need to remember that it's subtracting out the freezing point depression that you calculate from the formula of molality times freezing point depression constant of the solvent times I. So in this case here, we have the freezing point of the solvent, which is water, is what? Excellent. It's zero degrees Celsius. And we're subtracting out 7.4389 degrees Celsius. Now this would have been three significant figures, so it looks like the fewest decimal places is to the hundredths place. So your final answer would be a negative 7.44 degrees Celsius. And so when we add, just to kind of review here, when we add 21.2 grams of ethylene glycol to 85.4 milliliters of water, the freezing point of the solution is no longer zero degrees Celsius, but rather it is negative 7.44 degrees Celsius. All right, so then let's continue on and finish up our calculations, investigating the boiling point of that elevation. So with the boiling point elevation, it's still molality, but it's times the boiling point elevation constant, which for water is 0.512 degrees Celsius per molal and then times one because we're working with a covalent molecule that doesn't break apart in water. And I got this to be 2.047698. Once again, three significant figures here. And this is degrees Celsius. And the boiling point of the solution is equal to the boiling point of the solvent, which in this case is 100 degrees Celsius for water, plus the boiling point elevation that we just calculated from the formula molality times the boiling point elevation constant for water times I. So remember, the name says elevation, which means that we need to add. When you hear the word freezing point depression, that means it lowers, so we need to subtract. So that's how I remember it, using the names. And then when I calculated this, it was 100 degrees Celsius plus 2.047698 degrees Celsius. So the boiling point of the solution now is 102 point zero five degrees celsius it raised the boiling point from the normal boiling point of pure water okay once again you've heard me say this before when you're working word problems it's important that when you get to the final answer you ask yourself does this make sense um, based on the experiment and like i said before you know now that freezing point is lowered, it's depressed. And so when you look at your final answer, it should be lower than the freezing point of the solvent. If it is not, then maybe you have an algebra error or a calculator error. Also, boiling point, when you calculate the boiling point of a solution and compare it to the boiling point of the solvent, it should be higher. So like I said before, always, you know, check yourself, rationalize your final answers, make sure they make logical sense based on your structure property relationships, the trends that you know and understand through studying that particular concept. All right, thank you all for watching and see you next time.